Hey everybody, what's up? It's Joel, aka The Daily Guru, and it's time for another edition of Something Old, Something New. <laughs> Today for Something Old, we're going to an outright classic. It's 1972 and Al Green's Let's Stay Together. There's a reason that Al Green stands as one of the giants of soul music, and this record is perhaps the most obvious realization of that truth. While every soul singer in history has their own unique style, you can easily argue that when it comes to being smooth and just delicate, nobody comes even close to Al Green. Though it would be the other album he released in 1972 that would be his most commercially successful, there's no question that this is the masterpiece, and it's led by the classic title track. It's the way that there's everything from funk to blues to jazz that gives the arrangement such an amazing musical diversity. And the backing band on this record has recorded with everyone from Isaac Hayes to Talking Heads over the years. But there's no question that Al Green is the focus of every single track, and it's impossible not to get drawn deeply into each of these songs. At the same time, Al Green represents the pinnacle of the idea that you don't need volume to make impact. And this approach gives every song even more intimacy. Whether it's the range and sonic arrangements all across Let's Stay Together, or the sheer bliss that's found on every single moment of this album, there's a reason it remains iconic after more than 40 years. If somehow you don't own this record, get on that right now. Thank me later. <laughs> Today for something new, we're gonna check out the brand new release from Swans, and it's called The Seer. If you don't know Swans, then you've truly missed out on one of the most unique bands in all of music history, as nobody has ever made music remotely like they do. At the same time, there's no question that Swans enjoy making very challenging records, but each time, the payoff is well worth the effort. This time around, band founder Michael Gira says that this record is really a culmination of every bit of music the band has ever created, and everything he's ever done musically. Honestly, this is completely accurate, and for people who have been listening to Swans for decades, as well as people who have never heard the band in their life? Simply put, this is one of the most outright impressive records in recent history. Though the record is certainly based in the noise rock roots of the band, you simply cannot deny the massive stretches of stoner metal influence you can hear on almost every single song, as well as the group dabbling in what's almost drone-like orchestrations. There's even a point on the second disc where the sounds are eerily reminiscent of Pigs on the Wing era Pink Floyd. And yes, I said second disc. The Seer is four sides and more than two hours of amazing music. This album has it all, from punishing yet somehow inviting and mesmerizing guitar passages, massive percussive assaults, and absolutely huge walls of noise. Yet you can't deny just how delicate and outright beautiful these arrangements are. Adding to the sonic structure, there's a wide range of vocalists, including Katie O from Yeah Yeah Yeahs, and there's just no musical precedent like this anywhere in history. In the end, it's almost stunning to experience just how far swans have come throughout their career. And there's no getting around the fact that this is one of the most exciting and outright phenomenal records in years, and easily one of the best of 2012. So on the buy it or borrow it, there is no question. This is a 100% buy it. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you dug it. If you did, go ahead and click subscribe, leave a comment, click like, whatever you want to do. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr right here, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. <laughs>